Pine Marsh. I mean, I I heard you speak to the players when you first took over here. It, it, it really does mean something to you as a place and as a club. Oh, look, Pine Marsh is a, it's a holy grail of football in this state. Or oh, soccer, you can still look well, either or for me. I grew up with it being soccer. I played here when I was eleven. Um, going all back in 1968. Well, what side was allowed out here? It was, an under, it was a northwest. There was a schoolboys team, no. Lawrence Bay Primary versus Parry Hills Primary. So what yeah, was here back when you Cup. played here? So if you look at High Marsh now, with all the stands, purpose, arguably the best pitch sitting, in Australia. Sitting where we are now, probably would have been on the roof. Um, no, actually, sitting where we are now, the stand had finished. The stand was down that way a little bit yeah. further. The whole pitch was probably 20 odd metres that way. Um, towards the offices. So there was a road out the back, it was just gravel hills all the way around. Um, some old fashioned sort of light poles and um, not many lights. The lights were okay to play under. So them. I guess on that, it's a really strong me message to the state government, isn't it? That this is the home of soccer in this state. <laughs> now you that... turn this into a political No, debate. I didn't know. I just thought I'd throw it in. It is the home of soccer in this state. and. and you know, from where it was when I was a kid and the amount of times I've played here and, and come to watch games, I've captain Australia here. You know, that, for me, that's an honour um, to play here in your, in the, your country's colours. Um, and to have played can, here... Can I just uh, interrupt? So, you mentioned Australia. You you had some record in gymnastics too, didn't you? You, you were involved... No, I uh, did gym when I was a kid, but I wasn't... Was it? Really but then it led to Australia in, in the Olympics. Yeah, yeah, no, the Olympics was obviously um, with the football team. Yeah. And uh, we went there in Seoul in 88, but that was when I finished up as well. And that's uh, 24 years ago, so it just seems like yesterday. <laughs> um, yeah, but no, this, it is a message, I guess, to the government. This place needs to be looked after. It needs to be nurtured. You don't get too many places like Hindmarsh. This has been here for, for a long, long time. Um, and it is the only purpose-built football slash soccer stadium in the country. And a lot of teams like to come here. All right, it could hold a few more people, uh, but if you get your fifteen odd thousand here, it's mm. the atmosphere is fantastic, and the crowd are um, like it's been said a million times. They're our twelfth man, and it's it's such a great place to play when the it's a sea of red. Would you say the Adelaide crowd, and it's it's certainly well known within Fox circles and Australia wide, it seems a really knowledgeable crowd. The it's, the fans actually know the game. I mean, it's I know, I know all fans probably do to a degree, but they do understand the the finer points of the game. There's a strong football culture in in Adelaide or in South Australia, uh, and if you look historically, the number of Socceroos that have actually come from from this state, mm. from this city, um, certainly it shows that, that we punch above our weight. Um, it's a fairly widespread game around. Adelaide as well, a lot bigger than, than people give it credit for. Um, and so from that perspective, you know, we've got a strong Anglo-Saxon culture, we've also got a very strong um, immigrant culture that came out after the war. So the, the football the football knowledge in this state, um, in terms of a lot of the older guys that I still have coffee with, that I've played with and against, um, there were some fantastic players in years ago, but they're still here and they're still involved. So I guess because Adelaide being Adelaide, it's, it's still a bit smaller than the other cities. You don't lose, that doesn't dissipate that that, that, that bowl of super football that, that was created a long, long time ago. Mm. And so you've got a great culture here, and so the fans do know what they want. They're, you know, fans aren't to be treated um, with disrespect. They're not to be taken for fools because they're not. They understand the game. Um, they understand the culture of the game, and, the, and they want success, and they understand the club. And I think if the fans can be part of this club um, and feel like they're part of it, and we have to engage them, of course, then um, I think it's it's great for the club and it's great for the game in this state. I've got a trivial pursuit question for you. How, how many, uh, lots of people want to know, how many cups of coffee do you have during a match? Uh, look, it's probably over more before. I have a couple before, because I get here, if we kick off at 7.30, I'll be here by 5 o'clock. Um, have a couple then, I have one in the first half, one in the second half. Yeah. And, and back to the heritage of the game here, since you've been here, you've taken the club to the suburbs, I guess. You've taken the game out to the Super League clubs, we've played them, we've practiced with them, we've socialised with them. Do you see that as a really important role for us to play? It is. We, we represent this state on a national stage. Um, we are, in effect, a, a state team. Um, because of the football, co our code being national, um, you know, days are gone where South Australia plays Victoria or New South Wales or, or whatever. That's, that's not important anymore. It's all on a, on a club level now. Um, and 
you know, in, say where you've got two clubs, it might be in one city, it might be more regional, like say Sydney and the new West Sydney club, for example, or either side of um, the Yarra and Melbourne, for that sort of thing. But um, here, we represent the state, we represent the city, we represent all of the state. And so we need to get out and engage with the local clubs because they're the people that buy the season tickets. Mm. They're the kids that will want to aspire to wear a red shirt in future years. And the only way they're going to get to know us and feel comfortable is for us to, to, to go be out there. there. They can't come here. It's impossible. It's, that just doesn't work logistically. But the other way, we can go to them. And it's, I think it's good for, for us to engage the local community as well. It keeps everybody's feet firmly on the ground because everybody started somewhere. Yeah. And, you know, I know as a player, you had your heroes. We're the, well, the players are the heroes for the eight, nine and ten year old kids playing out in the suburbs now. So we've got to go out and, and make sure that we, they know that we care about them. Yeah. Well, we could keep talking like this all day, but I can see the snow starting to fall on Mount Lofty. So uh, if you don't mind, I'll take my leave and go and get a jacket. See ya.